I want to help make a skill tree for you. And this is not just interesting because you might be specifically looking for a skill tree. It also shows a bunch of interesting programming techniques and habits to get into. So as a quick overview before we get into the actual tutorial of setting up the basics, what we have here is a widget that has these nodes inside of it. Each one of these nodes can be unlocked or available. So you can see this one up here is unlocked, so everything it is connected to is available. This one is not unlocked, so the things below it are not available. Each node represents a skill, and this can literally be a skill in a gameplay ability system, whether it is Unreal's own gameplay ability system or whatever you programmed yourself. But it can go much further than that. It can be stat upgrades. It can even integrate with stuff like your inventory system. Maybe certain things in this skill tree give you items. Every skill will be entirely scriptable to do whatever you want it to do. It's going to be entirely asset-based. And in the same way, the unlocking methods are also going to be entirely asset-based. So we're going to have a bunch of different assets with different costs. Some of them might be entirely for free. Some of them might just check if you have a certain amount of experience. Some of them might check if you have a certain amount of experience and then take that as a cost. But again, these are entirely scriptable, so they can also check for items and whatever you might want to do. We can even make something where we unlock a skill in this branch of the skill tree, but in this branch of the skill tree we have an unlocker that checks whether or not we have that skill unlocked. It's super scriptable and super customizable. So whenever we unlock one of these, everything below it, as you can see, becomes available for us to unlock as well. Obviously everything will be saved, the lines between all of the nodes that connect up will be automatically drawn as well, which I can show you in the actual widget viewer here. So if I take this widget and I duplicate it, for instance, give it a new node ID, we'll actually get around to setting this all up in today's video for the most part. Then I can go back into this one right here and I can say in its next nodes we have, what is this one called, lightning 3. So we say lightning 3 and when we compile, it will draw a line between them automatically. All that while also having this widget that we can zoom in and out of based on our mouse position. And we can drag and pan along with it as well. So there's a lot of things to this. There's going to be a couple of different videos. In today's video, we're just going to be setting up the basic foundations of how a node of this type will work inside of our tree. So here in an entirely empty project, we're going to be reconstructing that. And as we go along video by video, I'm going to upload the project files for YouTube members and patrons to follow along with as well. So I guess the way that we're going to get started with all that is we'll make a new folder here for all of our skill uh, tree related stuff. And the very first thing that we're going to be doing about this is just make a new interface thing for a widget blueprint. It'll be a user widget as per usual. And we'll call that WBP skill node. Everything that we're going to be doing today is going to be centered around building up the basic skill node. So let's set up the widget visuals for it before we do anything else. And we're going to be starting with a size box because I want these to just have a preset size. So we're going to set width, overwrite, and height to, let's do like 50. And then we set this fill screen instead of being desired so that we can actually see the proper size of our little box here. Your mileage may vary. You might want this to be like 150 by 150 or maybe you don't even want them to be square. That's up to your own creative interpretation. I'm actually going to go back to 100 by 100. 50 by 50 is a little small. Inside that, we're going to be putting a button because obviously these are going to be buttons that we want to click on to actually trigger stuff with. It's entirely going to be a button, which then is going to have other stuff inside of it. That's going to be in the form of a vertical box. So we're going to be putting a stack of other widgets inside of this button, which once again, I start with a size box because that's just an easy way of setting up the size of a individual element. And we're going to be setting the size here for a image that's going to go inside of the size box. The image is going to be horizontal and vertical alignment fully stretched. And then the size box we set a width and a height override in, which we set to a little smaller than the button itself. So the button is, I think we set it to 100 by 100, right? So let's set this to 80 by 80. Then we can set this to align however we want. I'm just going to align this to center center. And then we can even set this to fill or auto. It doesn't really matter because we're using a size box that has these overrides inside of it. So these things, not the most important. 
Then one last thing is obviously we want to display the name of our node. So we put in the vertical box as well, a little text block. Align that in the center center. And then in here somewhere, uh, we have the justification as well. I'm gonna center that too. And then the font size, I'm gonna set to something a little bit smaller. I'll uh, do something like 12, seems pretty good. And we can set that to whatever font we want. I'm just gonna keep with the default for now. Now we wanna make sure that a couple of things that we set up here are gonna be set as variables so that we can change them as we go along. So that's gonna be the text and we'll give that a name as well. Uh, we'll call it a name because it's gonna be the name of the node. And then the image too, I'm going to make sure that that's set to variable and we'll call that icon. And then lastly, the button itself is gonna be a variable because we obviously need to be able to interact with that in our code too. Now you can tweak this a little bit. You probably want a little bit of padding uh, between this size box and the name. So we can go into here, uh, the size box itself. On the bottom, we can say, oh, we want like five units of padding uh, in there. And it just creates that padding. Probably want a little bit of padding on the top as well. And that way there's just a little bit more room. It just looks a little bit more visually pleasing. With all that, it's finally time to go over into our graph mode and start doing some code stuff. The most important part being our pre-construct for now. In pre-construct, we're gonna set our name and our icon, so we can just drag those in from our variables here. Those represent, obviously, the name and icon objects that we have here, the image and the text. And we need to set those based on some variables. So our name is gonna be set text, and you can either use this pink one or this function one down here. Generally speaking, it's a good habit to get into to use functions and not set variables directly. So we're gonna be using the function one. And we'll just make our in text here, we'll make that a variable and we'll say that's the name. You can't just call it name because we already have a variable called name. Uh, so we'll call this node name instead. It's gonna be a text. And we wanna make that instance editable. So we expose it with this little eyeball icon. In the future, we're going to replace this with, instead of a variable, we're going to make a specific asset for each skill, and the asset itself is going to be housing the name instead. But for now, just setting everything up, let's just make some variables on here that we can then later replace. And with the icon, uh, we do something very similar. What we do is we set its brush, which just means the way that it looks, its visuals, we set that from a texture because we're going to be given in a texture for this and once again we just make that a promote to variable uh we'll just call that the icon skill icon something like that and expose that very much the same as before we're going to be putting this inside of a asset in a moment anyway but for demonstrational purposes this is the way that we're going to start with it all right, now that we have this set up, we can actually start instancing this thing inside other widgets to make it do whatever we want. So this is gonna be our skill node. Now we're gonna make another user interface widget blueprint, and that's gonna be our actual skill tree. And we'll call that WBP skill tree just because we're gonna be good with naming things. This one will start by making a canvas panel. Generally speaking, we only use canvas panels for things that we directly add to the screen. This is gonna be a slight exception down the line and you'll see when we get to that, how that exactly works. But for now, we're gonna add this directly to the screen for just testing purposes, right? So what we do is we look up here our WBP skill node and we can put those in. Now you will note that it is kind of squashed and you can do weird stuff with it. If we enable size to content, it's going to actually size itself to that size box that we gave in before. So you'll see if I go back in here, I change this size box size to 200 by 200, compile that. Now, this one is also bigger because it's trying to always be the size that is set up to be in here, uh, which is gonna be 100 by 100. I kind of like that size. If you don't have size to content on, uh, it can be a bunch of different sizes, which might actually end up being uh, somewhat of a problem down the line when we start drawing the lines between the nodes. So you want to have size to content being on. You also want the anchors to be aligned to the center in this case. And that goes for every single scale node that we make. So if we just copy and paste this one over a couple of times, 
The reason that we all align them to the center is because we want them to, relatively to each other, always remain in the same place. And aligning everything to the center point is going to make that happen for us. So now we can just go in here and I can say, well, the name and the icon for each one of these are exposed. So I can call this node one and you'll see it's gonna be called node one. Give it any random image and it displays that image. This can be node two with a different image and so on and so forth. So we've got our basic nodes set up. They don't do anything yet, but we'll work toward that in probably the next video. So for now, I just wanna add this to the screen and keep this as a light introductory episode to the skill tree concept. So I will go in here, third person blueprints, third person character. I'm using the third person templates for this project. And in there, I will just add a debug key on the T for tree, because we're making a skill tree. And when we press this, I will just create a widget. The widget that we're gonna be creating will be our skill tree. So WBP skill tree. And we'll just directly add that to the viewport. And now we'll see if I press the T key, I have my skill notes on screen. So. This is a very basic setup of how we can put these widgets inside of another widget to start creating our skill tree setup. Next time, let's take a look at actually changing these things out instead of being separate variables into having assets to give in and setting up a little bit of code for those assets to actually function as skill unlock assets. And a very big thank you to all my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help support the channel or get any of the project files in any of my tutorials, there's a link down below to the Patreon page to support me or alternatively as a YouTube member. My cave students tier supporters, Oiku, Earl, Monserville, Erno, and my cave digger tier supporters, Mauricio Ferrias.